I can help with anything. Here you go, sir. Tell your friends. Can I? This is not listening. Yes, it is. You said help people. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I said listen to the universe. <clears throat> I don't know what that means. Look, you're trying, and I applaud that. But handing out flyers is, how should I put this, so stupid it makes me sad. This is not a yard sale. This is something that has never happened in the history of humanity. But this will get results. You know what? Fine. You go get your results. Fine. I, I will go get results. I got you mid sip. Huh? I, got, I got you mid sip. You did, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't. Uh, the lights came up very fast. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Jason, thanks so much for being here. Congratulations on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's fantastic. I was telling you in the green room that it's, it's super weird and surprising and great. It's nothing like I've ever seen. Yay! That makes me happy. <laughs> so let's talk about how how you got involved. Um, I I I. I it was, you know, pilot season again, a, a exciting and dreaded time for actors. And uh, How many pilots have you been a part of that didn't end up getting picked up, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I think actually only one that straight up didn't get picked up. But uh, I was also on a show where we did six episodes, and then they just said, never mind, <laughs> before it even aired. So, before it even aired? Yeah. Wow. Um, it was a, a painful time. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, I've, I've, I've gotten lucky and had at least a season or, or two in the ones that I've done. Um, it's such a weird thing. This is super tangential, and we'll talk only about the show in just a second. When talking to an actor and you talk about their projects that don't succeed or pilots that don't work, because it's all public for us, I think, as audience right. members. And so we're like, what was that like? And completely forgetting that for the actor, it was like, Sucked, I lost the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had Adrian Palicki here, and it was like, what was it like when the Wonder Woman pilot didn't go through? And she was like, it was awful. What are you talking about? Like, it was <laughs> yeah, terrible. It was like a big thing in my life, and it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, with any, you know, with any TV show, there's, there's the, the, you know, the, the hopes and the dreams, and, and there's this whole magic period of time where you're just making it, and... Um, you know, no one's been mean to you on Twitter yet, and <laughs> you know, it's all very exciting. And then all of a sudden, you realize, oh, we're we're gonna have to share this, and uh, um, it's it's always very scary. So yeah, it's exciting when when uh, when it goes well and people seem to like it. And um, but yeah, there's always that moment where you know, I feel like it's I feel like it must be sort of like the first day of school for your child, where you're like, oh, I hope people like him. I hope people think, at least I hope they don't pick on him. Maybe he won't be the coolest, but like he'll survive. You know, you, you hope for the best. And then you look at Twitter and you're like, oh, a lot of people like it. Oh, there are a lot of bullies. God damn it. There are always going to be some bullies. <laughs> so uh, what did you think when you first got the script? Uh, kind of what you said. I was like, this is so weird. And I, but I love it. I mean, it was, it was interesting because uh, I didn't hear anything about it uh, beforehand. They, you know, so I came to it completely uh, fresh. And, um, and as things started to get revealed, you know, it, first there were meteor crashes. And I was like, oh, okay, so it's this kind of show. And then Yvette shows up and starts telling me that she's a, you know, a warrior for God and that I'm supposed to save the world. And I went, oh, okay, so it's this kind of a show. And then it was really funny. And then by the end of it, I think the, the main thing that made me want to, to do it so bad um, was that at the end of it, I felt a little bit better somehow. Um, and I didn't feel better in like a, a sort of manipulated <laughs> into feeling better type of way. I just, I don't know, I kind of put it down. And I went, ah, that was, uh, I don't know, I like that feeling that I, I just got. Well, what I love about it is that it's not just these sort of big, broad things where it's like, you know, a meteor comes in and he's like a, a warrior for God, is that there's this element of that he is a depressed guy and mm -hmm. he has to sort of learn to live and find reasons to live. And there is, an, at least in the pilot, exploring these different elements of philosophy and his life that are kind of, that, that ground the show and sort of put it in this place outside of those sort of broad comic ideas, which are wonderful. Yeah, no, the, but that, that was what it was. You know, it was, it was um, I guess that's what it, the, 
the fact that it was grounded in such a, a painful moment in this person's life where he's, you know, attempted suicide and, um, and you know, he's, he's been... Everything that he had used to make himself happy uh, hasn't worked. You know, he's really... His whole life up to the point that we meet him has been... Um, in pursuit of external happiness and money and and um, and success and all of these these things that when it's all ripped away and there's no infrastructure he doesn't feel really like he's worth anything and so you know it, that's what I thought was beautiful is is to see that guy experience a, a ray of of hope you know it's it's very easy in other words to be hopeful and to be like you know life everything happens for a reason when everything is great and wonderful <laughs> and you're like yeah th i'm supposed to get everything i've ever wanted it, it it becomes tougher when when you've been battered around a little bit six episodes of a show and it doesn't air and it gets no. <laughs> yeah you know things like that you know <laughs> No, but you know, it, 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 I, I feel like that sort of that 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 more hard won optimism is uh, is nice. Optimism in the face of, you know, light in the face of darkness. Uh, well, then there's that element underneath all of this, even or maybe even sort of on the surface above it, is that it's also not clear how much of this is actually possibly psychosis. Right. Yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, he's he's had some troubles and, you know, no one else can see her. And, um, you know, uh, he also has had some head drama from the meteor and and the car door. Uh, so, yeah. So you, you don't really know how much of this is sort of in his head. And uh, um, but there have been a, there are a couple things that happen in the course of the pilot that at least convince Kevin. So that's his that's his first sort of leap of faith is maybe this person is real and I I should do this. But it's hard in the face of you know not being able to tell anybody else about it or you know talk to anybody or get any advice. He's is the just, audience supposed to take that leap of faith with him or is the audience supposed to be consistently on the fence? I I don't know. I I, I mean it it's. I feel like I feel like the. Well, it's up to you. I mean, <laughs> everyone. Let's can make ask their the audience. <laughs> no, it's not. But I think you know there are certain things where you know I, I step out into traffic and almost get hit by a car, and she makes oh, the yeah. truck go over my head. So you either have to go, you know, he somehow he st stepped out of the way, or that really did happen and and she said i mean that's the moment that convinces him and the trucker is kind of also what the heck unbeknown, happened? like he's in disbelief of what just happened as well yeah, but we so don't know what he's in disbelief of that's though, true exactly it could be some some other uh kind of miraculous thing that he you know i don't i don't know maybe a cat run out and said stop we don't know what happened, what he saw, but uh, but yeah, I think I think generally we we as an audience member are on the journey with Kevin, where at least we know that Kevin believes that it's all really happening and that he's he's safe and being saved by this person. What's your favorite part of playing Kevin? Um, I think there's there's a real uh, freedom to to him because. He he's at he we we meet him at a at a like a very you know at a at a crossroads in his in his life and this kind of incredible fantastical thing happens and I think what's nice about it is he's, he's not particularly cool or good at anything <laughs> um, and so I you know it, it I think what's fun is that it, whatever he's feeling at any particular time is is allowed I, I I never sort of have to feel like oh he wouldn't do that or you know he's he's kind of all over the place so he's also not really like a for lack of a better word like a smart aleck right like I mean he's like you said I mean he's not particularly good at anything but he's also not like this gateway character that's also kind of like winking or mocking everything at the same time yeah exactly he there is there is a there's a level of uh sincerity to him and and uh and i think he's sort of honest about you know even his his more um his uh his less <laughs> pretty attributes you know he's he's he can be really selfish and he can be like lazy and not want to do anything but he says it <laughs> you know he's a, he's at least honest about how he feels so um when you uh when you got the job what what did you relate to the most about kevin 
Um, I think I I think one of the things I related to the most uh, is is his sort of his sense of of guilt over, with the relationships in his life. I I feel like there there are times certainly where I've been focused on other things or I've been focused on work and I you know and I assume that everyone in my life. Uh, knows that I love them and knows that I care, and then you know, and then I, I've I've heard I haven't called my dad in like yeah. three weeks. <laughs> exactly, yeah, it's exactly that that kind of thing, and you know, and uh, and that 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 was sort of painful to to hear that you know that at any point in my life, friends or family members have gone, I you know, does, is this a real relationship? Does he? You know that w- that was very painful for me to to realize, and so you know I've 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 felt kind of behind the eight ball in terms of like trying to make things up to people and trying to you know and being like I know that I <laughs> have acted this way literally up until this point in our <laughs> lives, but I'm gonna change now. I'm gonna try now. So um, yeah, and I, I also you know I, I've I've had two three months later. Shit. Yeah, exactly. I know Dang I it. said <laughs> starting now. I know, but okay, one more chance. You know, you only get so many of those. So, but yeah, I, I mean, I think I, I've had plenty of uh, sort of moments in my life where I've been like, this thing has to change, and I've sort of had to reinvent myself in a in a way and change behaviors and things like that. And so, um, so I think that's that's sort of uh, and just uh, that Kevin has a hard time, as do I. Uh, thinking too far ahead, um, he just sort of is. There's something about him that's just kind of wherever he is in that moment. Do you have a hard time thinking ahead yourself? Oh yeah, I can't. I I, I can think until tomorrow, and it's infuriating because someone will be like, "Hey, you want to do something next week?" And it's like they see my eyes roll back, and I think, and I can I call you the day before. <laughs> Do you think that in any way, I mean, you've had an incredibly successful, great career as an actor. Do you think that not being able to think so far ahead has hurt you in any way in your in your career? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think so. I mean, there definitely have been times where, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be working on some thing and uh, some independent movie or so, something. And I, I, you know, other actors are going, hey, can you after work, can we like, can you put me on tape and let's audition for this other thing? And. I I have I've almost never been able to do that. I it's so hard for me to focus on <laughs> more than one thing at one time that uh for a long time, you know, I would just I would just do a thing and then finish it and be like, "Ha, ah, oh my gosh, I didn't try to get another job after this." All right, let's uh <laughs> now I'm here, now I'm ready. Um, you know, and I've I've seen other actors be able to sort of, you know, snowball things because they're able to focus on more than one thing at a time. But you know what? I, you know, the the tortoise and the hare is a well. You got a show. You're myself. you're doing okay. You're doing okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not to infer that you're not doing okay. No, you're no. doing pretty well, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I yeah, I think I've 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 made some mistakes. How well? <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry that I drug you down a rabbit hole rag- oh, no, really where you felt the need to say to an it. audience I've made a, some mistakes. <laughs> um, do you think, how well do you think you would do Saving the World? Pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> given, 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 the situ- given the situation, you'd be like, I'm out, find someone else. You know, I'm well, good. look, I would, I would really try. I would do my best, and I would, uh, but, you know, <laughs> I... I I have a very low sort of anxiety meter, you know, like it'll especially with this thing of not being able to think too far ahead. I do a lot of it's so and so's birthday tomorrow. I have to go get something, and I then I'm just you know at a store or I'm at the mall and I'm just going uh, uh, I can't think of anything. Uh, okay, I'll get this for me. That's one good thing. And uh, uh, you know it's very it's so. Um, do you ever do this thing when you have to get somebody a birthday present or a present where you get fixated on the idea of what would be a good present, but you don't really find the thing that equals that good idea and you yes. end up getting them a bad version of that and you're like it was gonna be and i'm really sorry it's not but this <laughs> is the piece of shit that i got you anyway <laughs> exactly well i'm i'm really good at getting presents when it's not people's Same. birthday like i'll walk into a place and be like that my friend would like that and then instead of going i'll just save it until their birthday and it'll be perfect i'm just like here 
They're like, what is this? Why? I got you something. Love me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry for the last 10 birthdays. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, yeah, again, so, you know, we all have our little, uh, we, our, our brains are little machines that have little things that jam. You're like, oh, you have to w jiggle the handle. <laughs> it's like that. You get used to, you get used to what you have to do in your brain. Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Who has a question? Are you right here? Hi. So, uh, one of the best things I love about the pilot was how much it reminded me of another show that you were on, Gravity Falls, because of the the weirdness and the twin sister and all these <laughs> different elements. So, I was wondering, um, do you see a little bit of Dipper Pines within Kevin when you got the role? Uh, yes, I do. I I, I did. I I do see a lot of similarities. Um, you know, he's a he's a person who has some. They're both they're both people who have some inside information that they don't necessarily uh, are they're not able for one reason or another to share with uh, the people around them. Um, I think Kevin is a guy who uh, trust no one would be a thing <laughs> that Kevin feels. Um, and and you know and the the uh, the. The bond, uh, the the sibling bond, I think is is very strong. I, I you know I love my my sister and brothers so much, and I can't even imagine how even much closer we might be, or how much we would hate each other potentially. <laughs> I think it's one or the other with twins. But um, to to have to you know to enter the world at the exact same time, I think that's a very special uh, um, bond. Um, but yeah, there I, there were a lot of similarities. You know, I, they they both have a a big task. There's a lot at stake, and uh, you know they both take it on. They both have some anxiety problems, and uh, <laughs> and they sound similar. <laughs> What's it like? I mean, I think I feel like you've done this before on shows, but I mean, you're literally in every scene of this of this show. It's not just that you are the lead in the show. I mean, you are the lead, number one in the call sheet. I would imagine every day and in every scene. What's that like? Um. It's, have you had that before? I've never show? had that before. Uh, even if I've been, I, I've always been, uh, for the most part, you know, uh, in ensemble shows. Even if I'm in the, you know, the 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 tier of people who have the most days of work, I've never. This is the first time I've been in almost every scene, every day. I'm sure as the show progresses, like an ensemble will build, as as what happens with most television shows. But I mean, for the first season, it's mostly going to be you. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of me. I uh, I'm sick of me. Um, no, I it, mean it, being it, number one in a situation like that. Number one is a poor for, way to put it, but I mean that's just call, on the call sheet. It's yeah. just like a different, I think, a different vibe for the for the actor. Uh, it, it is. It, it is. Uh, it's different. I, I mean, I, there was this this moment that was sort of uh, amazing and and bizarre and crazy where I was at the we were announcing all of the new shows and. Um, and I, I had, uh, I had met Carrie Washington a couple of times, but she came out to me and she was like, "Let me tell you something about <laughs> like being number one on a show. Like it's a marathon, and you have to get enough sleep, and you have to really take care of yourself, and um, you know, it, there's not a lot of time for anything else." And uh, and it was, it was this really amazing moment. Uh, and laid it down for she you. laid it down for me, and um, and she she's right. I mean, it's really like, you know, it's funny because there's a lot of productions going on in Atlanta, and every once in a while, a friend of mine or someone I've worked with on something before will be like, "Hey, I'm gonna be in Atlanta for a week. Let's let's hang out." And then they get there, and I just keep on being like, "I can't, I can't tonight, I can't." <laughs> Maybe you tomorrow? Wanna, no, I'm sorry. I actually, I can't. <laughs> it's, you want to come by set and have coffee with me in between setups? Maybe? <laughs> right. Like. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but but I, I have been able to do it every once in a while. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's intense, but it's also it, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it feels like there's a there's a big responsibility uh, in terms of like you know setting a, 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 a tone on set. You know, it was it was. It was easier to kind of come in every once in a while and clown around and try to bring the spirits up. Um, it's another thing to you know to try to to try to do that uh, for you know many hours a day. I 
take naps and not give the expectation not like give the expectation that you're always going to be of that personality of clowning around all the time right exactly what i what i've really learned about myself is that my, my my body seems to have like not necessarily an off switch but um you know how you know how in, one of those people that can just fall asleep. Yeah, oh, fuck. In, like uh, I am so jealous. In in like old computers, you, you know, you put the mouse in the lower left corner. That's that's me. Uh, like that's if I the... sit down on a break and I, I just go in the lower left corner and then I, <laughs> it's awful because my I haven't figured out how to hold my <laughs> neck in those periods of time. But I I worked with a guy who would just sit go to his desk. Yeah, that's what it's like. And you like, like you have to go on air now. You'd be like yeah. Let's go. And you go, and we're like, what the hell? Yeah, it's a weird, it's like powering down. How do you do it? Uh, I, I. What's the secret? It's. Tell me. <laughs> Teach me, sir. Well, I, I had a, pro- I had this problem. Be my sleep Yoda. <laughs> my nap Yoda. In, in high school, I, 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 th- I think part of it is just be you're so exhausted you don't have uh, a choice. And in high school, I had I had this problem too, where I would be I would I would I had terrible sleeping habits, and I'd come to school and I I, you know, if I'm engaged, then I can stay awake and I can I can always sort of muster up energy. But as it's a strange thing, as soon as I'm sitting somewhere and it's like a little quiet, I'll start. To just think of something else, and then my brain is just like, "All right, he's he's distracted. Get him, <laughs> pull, it, <laughs> shut it down." And then I just, <laughs> it's very, it's a very weird sensation. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> uh, next question. Hi there. Hey. Uh, so you recently broke a world record uh, involving hugs. Um, could you please tell us about it? <laughs> Good man. Oh, this old thing. Uh, Not a plant because I failed to do my job. Not a plant because I failed to do my job. Um, You guys, it was crazy. I have wanted to break a Guinness Book of World Record. I have wanted to break a Guinness World Record that will eventually be in a book um, for for as long as I knew about uh, the Guinness Book of World Records. I remember pouring through and being like, okay... Tallest, not gonna happen. Um, you know, I like going through and being like, this one may be possible. How fast can I jump rope? And then timing it and being like, I'm way off. Okay, never mind that. Um, and so this this was a, an idea um, that uh, that came about, and I I thought, hey, well, you will never break a Guinness world record if you don't try. So the record is most hugs given in a single minute? Most hugs given in a single minute. And How the, many hugs did you get? The, the, the record before today was 79, and I gave 86. 86? Yeah. I, I, I really took it seriously. I trained, I practiced, I, I, you know, I, I awkwardly forced my cast members and crew members to, to you know, it's, there's a whole technique. You gotta like, it's, you know, this part is easy. The, the dismount is the tough part because- So that's... what's the dismount? What's the, mat? what's the secret? You just- you Don't mind sharing your, 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 your tricks with us. Well, uh, then uh, someone in this very crowd could take it from me, right? Uh, well, no, you, you sort of, um, it's it's actually there's a lot that's up to the the huggers because you have to stand in one position and if they take a long time then you're sort of sunk. You have to make sure that they know that as soon as your torsos touch and the arms go around, you, you know you gotta. You're like, so are you standing in this and they're lining? They're like coming through, or are they you come, hitting each per? They come through. They 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 just align slowly, and I just get each one, and then get. get I mean it's. <laughs> It's definitely a quantity, not quality situation. <laughs> <laughs> They're not satisfying how There's not like, that should be another record where it's like, oh, I really felt like we had a moment. This was like, get out. All right, everyone, get out. Um, which is not necessarily the idea. But I think, that, you know, you get a little smidge of it that we, it was a happy, it was a happy experience. Wait, what would the other hug, uh, the other record be like most, like most intimate connections in one minute? <laughs> yeah, like exactly. what exactly would Most that? emotions felt during the space of one <laughs> hug. 
like seven people are just like, oh, you're just oh, you're I just was, I was like happy and comforted, but also kind of sad and weirded out. I feel like I really, <laughs> I feel like I really know you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think I have for one more question right here. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask, what was the biggest hurdle that you've had to overcome in your career? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and so were the other ones. I, uh, <laughs> uh, Don't lie, they suck. They no, were terrible. No, no, they, they really, they were, they were great. Um, honestly, I think the the biggest hurdle for me um, was my own insecurities and and. Um, and and, and I, I created a bunch of obstacles for myself. I would go into auditions and I would go, they're gonna, you know, uh, they're gonna think of me like this, or I'm gonna, you know, they're gonna feel sorry for me because I'm trying to do this and I'm not as good as my dad, or I, you know, or I'm not as funny, or uh, this is also embarrassing, <laughs> and um, and and for the most part, I was really putting that on people like a lot of people I think were more open to me th than I or just didn't care one way or another and I was like they are judging me so harshly and so deeply and really it was it was me and and there have been so many times where I have tried to um, as a general rule in my life um, if I am scared of something uh, I, I, I analyze it, and if I, it's like, oh, I, I could be um, physically hurt or harmed, then I go, maybe I should be afraid and maybe not do it. But if I'm afraid of, of being embarrassed or being humiliated or that people won't think I'm cool or whatever, I f would force my little self to do it anyway, and then I would, like, grow a little bit. And... Uh, and um, and the, and the same with that, you know. I there have been so many times where I've been like, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. But I, I don't want to be the person t that says no to myself. I'm gonna go until I get a no. And then sometimes you're like, oh, no, no one's stopping me. <laughs> I guess I keep going. This is crazy, I, you know. And you get way farther than you would have thought. Um, and you think back to the point where you would have given up, and you go, wow, that would have just been me stopping myself out of fear of someone else stopping me when there actually was not an obstacle there um, in the first place. There are real obstacles, but, um, but for me, the, the one in my brain was the toughest. Thank Here, you. Here's a, here's a, you seem like a, a fairly self-conscious person, I mean, in the sense that you're self-aware. Right. Yes. Very self-aware, you. and, you, and you're thoughtful about that. How do you get over? And this is someone who has, you know, acted in high school and takes acting classes every now and then for fun. How do you get over the just immediate embarrassment of acting? Oh gosh, yeah, it's a very embarrassing. <laughs> it's a real thing. It is a real thing because there's. A, a I was in an acting class, and two people were doing a scene in front of me, and there's only ten of us, and they started kissing for the scene, and they're kissing in front of 10 of us, and I was like, you guys are kissing. <laughs> like, there's only 10 of us. This isn't a huge audience. Like, yeah. you're now just in, making out in front of 10 people. This is weird. <laughs> it and is, there's so many weird elements of it, and, you know, it's, it's also, uh, it, it's also, you know, there's, there's a, there's an element of it that's, that's sort of, you know, a asking people to, watch you or or something like that uh, you know there's a part of you that that feels like you know a kid on like a diving board who's like mom 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 watch watch are you watching you're not watching like you know there's <laughs> there's uh there's like it feels sort of like that naked of you know like i need attention or i'll die type of thing um but but uh, you know i i think that there's that's also sort of the the thrill of it is that 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 um, that there's the potential for embarrassment, especially like in a scene in class. You know, I remember one of my friends in acting school just said, you know, if I'm gonna go down, I want to go down in a blaze of glory. Oh, I agree. And that so he would that. just, you know, he instead of being very subtle and withdrawn and kind of j missing the mark, he would just go for something and it would either really go down in a blaze of glory or it would be the most incredibly, you know, inspiring thing you ever saw. And so that kind of courage to 
to kind of let go of your fear of, of looking like an idiot and going, what's, what's the worst thing about looking dumb? Uh, and um, and, and the, the worst thing about it is that there are some people who will judge you and, and not be your friend or whatever. And, uh, but I don't think those people w were really candidates for true friendship anyway. You know, I think the, the, the people who really care about you and love you um, love you at your weirdest, most honest moments. And, um, you know, those are the friends that you want to cultivate anyway. Absolutely. Let's end it there. That was really nice. Okay. Jay, uh, Kevin probably saves the world is on tomorrow night. Second episode airs tomorrow night at what time? Uh, 10, 9 central. 10, 9 central on ABC. Everybody give it up for Jason Ritter. Let's hear it. Thank you so much.